The Morse key that has become known as the bathtub Morse key as a result of its shape is probably one of the more unusual and iconic types of Morse key used for radio telegraphy. The iconic shape of the bathtub key sets it out from other Morse keys that have been used over the years, for example like the Camelback key or the Steel Lever key or the British Post Office Morse key and even keys like the Clipsal. Even the famous WT-8 amp key that was used in the Second World War, mainly by the army, is not as unusual. The bathtub key was developed in the 1930s for use with radio equipment because the Air Force needed a sealed key that was protected from the environment. Some of the biplane bombers of the 1930s, like the fairy swordfish that torpedoed the Bismarck in the Second World War, had open cockpits that were exposed to the wind and rain. It was also used for some smaller air-sea rescue launches as well, where the sealed nature of the key was ideal. However, it was with large RAF bombers that it found its main use. Here, there was a real fear that fumes of aviation fuel within these aircraft could be ignited by sparks from a Morse key. This would not happen with a sealed key, such as the bathtub key. Accordingly, it was used in the RAF Lancaster, as well as many other large bombers of the time. Also, being sealed, it protected the operator from the possibility of shocks from the very high voltages that were often present across the contacts when they were used with the valve or tube-based equipment of the day. Although many of the operators would be wearing thick gloves to protect them from the cold during these bombing missions, it was a worthwhile additional measure for when they might not be wearing them. The Morse key was completely sealed, having a two-part Bakelite case, although there wasn't a rubber seal between them, as this wasn't thought necessary. The key measured about 130mm long by 41mm wide and 69mm high, from the base to the top of the handle. That's about 5.1 inches long by 1.6 inches wide and 2.7 inches high. And it weighed about 238 grams, which is nearly 8.5 ounces. The key featured an operating handle with a wide skirt at the bottom. It also had a spring clip to hold the two parts of the case together. This clip could be pulled up over the skirt of the handle to keep the key down to give a continuous signal. This could be used for tuning the radio up, and it was also thought it might be used if the aircraft was in trouble and the crew had to bail out. The key could be left down and give a continuous signal for rescuers to get a fix on their position using DF or direction finding equipment. Also on the top of the key there are the screw contacts for connecting the wires to the transmitter. With the clip totally unhitched the key could be hinged open to reveal the inner workings. There were two adjustments on the lever. The adjustment closest to the hinge enabled the tension of the spring to be adjusted while the one closest to the handle allowed the gap to be adjusted. The contact itself was in the centre. Another point to note is the leather diaphragm around the hole where the handle connects to the lever of the key. This ensures a good seal around this hole that would otherwise be relatively large. In this view, it's also possible to see an interesting aspect of the key. Because the lever assembly is mounted to the top of the seal section, the actual key action is upside down when compared to other keys. The bearing was a simple V-notch design, which was towards one end of the lever of the key. The combination of the V-notch and the non-centred bearing gave the key a very heavy and rather stiff-feeling action. Not easy or pleasant to use, especially when compared to some of the other types of key. Even the WT-8 amp British Army key of the time was much better. However, it probably worked out better having a stiff action, as the operators might need to send messages, even through the air turbulence experienced during bombing missions. And also, the operators would be wearing thick gloves, which wouldn't help. Overall, the stiff action of the bathtub key was probably beneficial. The bathtub Morse key is one of the more interesting keys to see, even if it's not a delight to use. Its shape and its use in a time of conflict gives it a place in the history of radio communications and Morse telegraphy. Thanks for watching, and if you want any more information about these and any other Morse keys, please head over to the description section for the video where there's more information and some useful links. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Thank you.